Hey, guess who's back? Another skin job tutorial right here. This is the Super J Drag Body from Proline. And this is the American Dream paint theme. Uh, this is the finished product. Look at those waves in that flag. Ooh wee, yes, that's how you do it. It's an outline, uh, a lot of metallic, and uh, let's go through this. I just used some regular uh, masking tape and tore it in the strips and put those on the side. I like a torn edge better than a cut edge with a razor. It looks more realistic. Um, what I'm doing right now is I'm spraying some candy yellow uh, from Inspire. Um, I want to put this highlighted edge around this flag because uh, the body is going to be a dark uh, charcoal metallic. And I need something to uh, pop around the edges. So there's nothing like a candy backed in chrome to give you a nice contrast. Um, so uh, one or two coats on that will get me the effect that I need. And you don't really necessarily have to worry too much about overspray because when you're using darker colors for a background, they pretty much absorb the overspray of a candy. Now, if I was doing uh, this outline in white, I would reduce my air pressure down to probably about 10 PSI and get a lot closer to my work. I would even angle the body differently so that the overspray would be pulled towards those two fans that are in the background. So um, I just went around my highlights with chrome. You can see how already it's, it's super bright, it's popping. I use my flame stencils to create a couple of lines and just a slight burning effect where it looks like the edges of the flag may be just starting to catch fire. So <clears throat> I didn't want to overdo that. Some people are finicky about the flag burning, so I didn't want to I didn't want to overdo that part. Uh, so right now what I'm doing is um, I have an American Eagle stencil. I'm spraying the white for the eyes um, because, like I said, this is going to be on a charcoal metallic background. Uh, so when you're doing light colors, like white, and I wasn't sure which way I was going to go with this. I was going to do candy colors, a candy yellow and <clears throat> uh, red and yellow and orange and set this eagle on fire and have those flames going over the back. But I didn't really want to take away from the flag itself. So I decided to go with the white and, and the yellow um, with, the, with the eagle. So after I did the, the little outline for the eyes, I did the little tiny white inside the pupil because you really need to have that. It adds to the realism of the eagle. Um, it's only a two-part stencil because most of this is done by freehand. But uh, the eyes and this beak, I'm going to fill it in in this black and go around my edges on it. Not too hard of an edge because, uh, like I said, you want to... Whenever you're copying over stencils, you don't really want to go too hard or too solid on the colors. You want to go lightly. You can always go back and add more, but if you do too much, you can't, you know, you can't go back. You either got to find a way to get it off of the body and try it again. Uh, or like I said, just spray it lightly and, and you'll be able to build on it. Spray it, take a look, add some more if you need to, uh, and you'll be fine. So what I'm doing right here is uh, I'm touching up the outlines. I'm adding the shadows of the beak. Um, there are two air holes at the top of the beak that are a little darker. Um, 
and I'm going over the eyes because the white of the eye really sits back in the eagle's head just a bit because of the feathers. And uh, the design of this eagle stencil is very menacing. So you can see the angle of the eyebrow, the curve of it, you know, where they're, they're facing inward and downward. And what I'm doing right now with the black is I'm creating uh, some shadows, especially around the eyes and, and around the beak. These are some of the uh, textures also of the feathers. Uh, and when you do that, uh, it gives you a good idea. And you can see it's not super dark as far as what I did for the feather area. It's just a very light dusting of the black. But where the darkness occurs is in the eyes and around the top of the nose. Uh, that in itself is, yeah, when you see an eagle coming, he's coming for you. So that darkness there <clears throat> basically sets up the whole face, the whole beak area. Um, I'm going to use this white with my uh, flame stencils from the um, from the master flame stencil set. Uh, and that's available on my website right now. So if you want to take a look, uh, you can just follow the link uh, to skinjobsrc.net and go to our stencil page and you'll find the uh, flame stencils there. Uh, I'm creating the lines for the feathers. Uh, but of course, the feathers are actually flames. I think it looks really, really good when it's done properly. And I'm doing this in white um, because, like I said, I really don't want to take too much away from the color that's going to be in the American flag. And an eagle, his feathers are white anyway, you know, especially around the face and the head. So for me to turn his feathers into flames, you know, that that's the goal. You want it to, to be an American eagle, but you also want it to be something different. So me doing the flames uh, around the beak, around the neck, off the top of the head. Uh, and again, if you look at my flame tutorials, you'll see the information, how to lay flames, how to direct them. Now, because the top of his head is round and the feathers may, I'm combining the shape of his head and his neck. Also keeping in mind how flames move I'm combining those two techniques. I'm giving him the round head, but the top of it is going upward as the flames fade off, as well as down as around his neck also. So, <clears throat> pardon me. So like I said, with, uh, with the overspray, uh, so with the white and the flames, yeah, there's some white overspray for sure, but I already anticipated that, and that's why I'm laying down this... Uh, this, uh, this, this glitter, this, um, it's basically a transparent glitter. Uh, there's no real color to it. It's just glitter coming out of the gun and some metallic silver and the metallic silver has been reduced one to one, one part reducer, one part, uh, metallic silver. Uh, and what that will do is it will basically erase all or any of the overspray that's on the body. It'll get hidden in all of the, the flakes and in all of the silver. So, um, you know, when you're spraying metallic uh, and glitter and anything of that nature in a transparency to get the end result of charcoal, you have to remember the more uh, silver or metallic that you spray, the lighter the charcoal will be. Um, I could just use a charcoal paint, but it doesn't always cover the overspray. When you do it this way, with a silver metallic and uh, a glitter or even a quick change paint, there are quick change paints that change from purple to blue, green to... Uh, uh, violet, when you use those types of paint, they have this film to them when you spray them. 
And when you get that film going, uh, they'll cover up your overspray. Uh, overspray in a lot of time, uh, lots of times have caused me all types of issues, but I've learned over the years how to uh, basically eradicate them or to cover them, blend them in. So uh, with that being said, what I'm doing right now, because I know I'm doing a charcoal body and I did all this metallic and all this glitter, what happens is from different angles as the light hits this body, um, you'll just see charcoal, but the tricks that I'm doing right now, I'm laying down these steel plates and I'm going to place these strategically over this body in certain places. Like if you look at where those three are, they're at the curve of the roof and you can see how the light is hitting the curve of the roof and I still have the plastic on. So in anticipation of the charcoal, and the charcoal is going to be dark. And uh, the work that I'm doing now uh, with this, this is a silver paint marker with a fine tip. I'm adding rivets. And then I'm going to spray black over these rivets to give them some highlights and some shape. Uh, these are all tiny little details that... Um, I used to use a stencil to make my rivets, but the paint marker is, is much better. It has the little uh, metal ball in it so you can shake it and get the paint flowing well. And it's a fine tip, so you just dab it down and it dries fast. Then you come back with your black and you spray a black uh, overspray cast onto each of those rivets. So back to my steel plate, which I'm spraying again. I'm going to spray several of them in black, uh, a very light dusting. It doesn't have to be dark because the body's going to be dark. This is just so that when the light hits this dark charcoal from different angles, it appear and then from other angles, it'll disappear. You won't always see it. It's only when the light hits it from certain angles at certain times will these plates even show up. And uh, I love doing that type of phantom work because the body itself looks great when it's done in the charcoal. And while it's sitting there, if you're walking around it or you look at it from a different angle, all of a sudden you'll see these metal plates. Because not only am I highlighting them and their rivets and I'm doing the shadows, but I'm going to add rust, uh, a rust color and some green, some rusted green. And those react because I already put the, the, the metallic silver and the, and the sparkle essence down. That rust on top of it and that green on top of it become a, a metallic rust, a metallic green that when the light hits it, it pops out at you. So like I said, from one angle, you see it. And then from another angle, you won't. So right now what I'm doing is I'm covering up all of my rivets with black. See, for every shadow and highlight, there should be another shadow and another highlight. You see how I'm shadowing all of the natural lines of the doors, of the weld spaces, because underneath this charcoal body, uh, you know, it's worn. It's actually worn down a bit, but you won't be able to tell that until the sun hits it from different angles. And, you know, you're basically getting two types of paint jobs in one. Uh, and again, this is something I've learned over the years of just doing this type of work. Uh, some of my rivets, you know, the, the rust and the water and the speed of the car moving has pushed the dirt and the rust back from the rivet. That's what I'm doing when you see me spray on a rivet and extend the line do a stroke um, because as the car moves and the water and the rust move, it moves towards the back of the car as the car is speeding. Just little details. So on one side of this car, the flag is draped. And on the other side, it was not much. So this is why I decided to put these plates on the passenger door. 
Um, and I staggered them, and you can see that. So that gives us some movement on the uh, passenger side. And you have to remember, again, uh, even though you can see them now, it's because the body is light. Um, in certain sunlight and during the day, you will not always see those plates. They'll only pop up when the light hits it properly, and then you're like, oh, wow, I didn't even know that was there. Um, it's intentional. It's a, it's a good trick. You should see when I do this type of technique and do all uh, skeleton parts and skulls and uh, hidden pieces on, on like a candy apple red or and then do it in black. You, you, there's so many nice uh, hidden features that you can paint in when you're starting with metallics and candies. Um, right now I'm spraying the transparent brown all around all of the plates because even though it's a transparent brown because I already laid the metallics they're gonna they're gonna pop when the light hits it because the metallic is the first thing that the Sun is gonna hit and from different angles that brown is definitely gonna shine through and it's like you know it's really really nice um, I think this is the green now I mixed several different shades of green with some brown and a little bit of purple to get uh, this dark, dark army green uh, for this effect. And I always use this uh, whenever I'm doing um, this type of uh, painting. <coughs> uh, pardon me. So, uh, I'm spraying more of the uh, uh, the metallic fleck to make sure I cover up all of the new work and to make sure I didn't leave too many open spaces on the body. This also, again, helps cut down on all of the uh, overspray. Once all I see is the metallic, transparent basically over the entire body it's good now if I want the shell to be lighter then I would spray a few more coats because the the black won't be able to punch through as much again the more you spray the more of that particular paint that you're using is going to affect uh, the work so like if I wanted these plates and the rivets to really, really show through more, I would spray several more coats of the metallic or even some, uh, some silver because then that will, t that will stop the black from punching through uh, as much. But I'm shooting for a charcoal. The charcoal will um, hide the work. It'll give me the char a charcoal look but it will still allow from different angles for the work to show, which is what I'm looking for. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, so right now I just took off the, the, uh, the piece around the engine. I took the window mask off because I want those to be dark black. I put rivets around the engine part of the uh, engine bay to go along with the rest of the car. And again, it gives it some, some texture. We're looking for realism here. Uh, so I'm going to spray a couple coats of black. It's not the finish of the black because if I held this body up to the light, you would still be able to see through, um, the body and I'll keep painting black until I can't see through it anymore. You don't have to spray 35 coats of black. It, it, it's just a waste of paint because these cars and bodies are made to take a beating and, you know, eventually, no matter what you do, you're going to destroy the body. You don't have to paint 35 coats of black to, to you know, get what you want. You can use duct tape, shoe goo, all of the traditional methods to protect the inside of the body if that's what you, you know, if you want to do. Uh, so I peeled that first section of the front part of the flag off where the stars and uh, stars are going to go. I'm using black and white. I always do that first to do my highlights and my shadows. And then I use one of my star stencils. Those are also on the, on the uh, website, in the stencil section. You get three different sizes. 
large, medium, and small, depending on uh, which one you want to use. Uh, I'm using white to lay the stars, and I'm using an opaque blue to back them. And you really can't see the detail with the overspray on because you need the shine from the light uh, to really see the highlights and the waves and everything that's in the, in the uh, work that I've done so far. You can see it a little bit. And you want to run your shadows and your shades and your highlights in the same direction throughout your whole flag. Let's say, for instance, you run your um, shadows and highlights on the, on, the flat, on the star section, north and south. And then when you get to the red, white, and blue, you run your shadows and shades east and west. It doesn't look right. So always make sure you run your shadows and your highlights in the same direction. That's that black and white streak. And just, you can do them evenly. You can stagger them. It, it just makes for a better effect. It looks more realistic. Uh, I'll do a flag tutorial just showing you certain sections of how you can do a flag. And I can make a flag so wavy you'll be, you'll be seasick. It's all about cuts and angles highlights and shadows because it's nothing but red white and blue and stars it's not hard it's the effect that you put into it um, so again with the red I peeled those sections out I did the black and white for my highlights and my shadows <coughs> well I got a very dry throat excuse me um, and all I did was the same thing I did with the blue I ran shadows and highlights the same way then I used the red I backed the red with some white to help the red pop a little bit then I backed it in black now I'm going to do the white so with white you of course you don't need a highlight all you need to do is do your shadows but you have to remember this is a white section of the flag that you're painting so you don't need the harsh black. These are very light dagger strokes of black because you only need to show a slight shadow or ripple in the white. From experience, when you spray them too dark, it's very harsh on the white. So do your dagger strokes very light and black. If you don't think you can, Mix some white with your black and get a gray, a light gray, and do your dagger strokes that way. Then spray a couple coats of white, back it in black, and you'll be happy. Just remember to do your highlight strokes and your shadow strokes in the same direction throughout. If you change one slightly on an angle, change the highlight and the shadow both at the same time. So if you look, you'll see uh, this finished product, basically. I did a couple more coats of black. But you'll see this flag has this bright gold or yellow chrome outline. And this is what it looks like in the sun. Look at the rivets on the hood, how bright they are. The metallic, you can see every fleck of metallic look at the eagle's head and his and his, how dark the windows are on this charcoal metallic and you see the back you can see the um the steel plates when the light hits it a certain way and from different angles there's the the rust there's the green and from certain angles you'll be able to see it and from and then again it disappears on you and then there's that flag. Look at the waves in the flag. It's curling. Look how it curls over the hood. Even though it's torn and tattered, the highlights and the shadows, see how it pops? Look at the waves in the blue. It curls right down over the stars and down to the bottom of the fender. So the metallic and the sunlight, when the, th when the sun hits this thing, it just really, really pops. So it came out really good. I'm happy. Uh, and this is the first time I've done this on this particular body. Every once in a while, I do something different that I can sell as a one of a kind. 
Uh, it'll be on my website. It'll be on my eBay store. I'm only doing one of these. Again, it's the ProLine Super J Drag Body. Uh, and it's going up, sale, up for sale today. First come, first serve. Again, it's only going to be a one of a kind. I'm not doing any more. Um, my stencils are on the website. Everything is there. I just want to say thank you for the support, everybody. Thanks for watching. I have more tutorials that I'm working on. I've been so busy. Uh, I haven't had a chance to do a tutorial in a minute. So just stay tuned and keep checking me out as I bring you more of these tutorials on what I'm painting, how I'm painting it, what airbrush I'm using. You'll find out all of that right here on Skin Jobs. Thanks again.